Now I do not think it matters which way goes up here. But it's gonna be kinda hard to get it. Okay, so that one can go in there. Now then this one should slip in on this side. There it is. That's actually the first time I did it. Okay. I'm not going to glue those joints. I'm going to just uh, imagine that once I paint it with the airbrush, you know, it's probably going to maybe kind of weld itself into place anyway. Just have to make sure I've got it positioned the way I want it. Yeah. Okay. Now there's just uh, six more to go. And uh, maybe we should try one of these signal lamps. I cut out a lot of video here while trying to make these signal lamps. There was a lot of oopses. Now I'm spreading my tweezers the same way as I did in yesterday's video. And I want to make sure that I'm going to have it so that I can, the tweezer is not going to hold the little square plastic part. See, maybe this isn't the best way. I'm worried that it could slip off and go pinging across the room. You know what? Maybe I'm going to have to turn this around. What would happen if I turned it around? Whoops. What would it be if I went like this? You can't believe how awkward this is. Maybe I'm going to try a different tweezer. Now I've given up on the tweezers. Reason being is because I did try a different pair and it went pinging off on me. Okay, so the little piece here that has to go in the hole here, let's just double check, yeah, there's a hole there. Let's carefully see if we can turn this over now. Okay, and you notice there's little little lines here that have to run vertically. Well, that's these little lines here. So when I take this very carefully and drop it on there, I want them in that direction. Okay, and I do believe that's going to fit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to carefully try and hold this down like that. Uh, so how can I hold it down and pick this up at the same time? Okay, let's try it like this. Maybe I'll just move everything around. I'll just change it around here. Okay. Is this still the right way up? Yes. Okay, so I'll hold it down very carefully. Whoops. Didn't go very far, don't worry. Maybe I've got the wrong kind of tweezer here. How would it be if I used my little jeweler's screwdriver? keeps wanting to move. Well, maybe I don't need to hold it down. Let's see if it's going to stick to the applicator. I mean, that's that's why I want to hold it down, because I'm afraid it's going to... Oh, come on. I'm afraid it's going to stick to the applicator. Okay, got that the right way. This is the right way. Ah, uh, I don't want to ruin this, you know, there, there isn't any extra pieces. You can't believe how small this is. Well, I guess you can. You can see the end of my finger there. My glue's going to be evaporated by the time I get through here. Okay, put it in this direction. Okay, I think we got it. Does that look like it's on to you guys? Oh, shoot. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake. 
Okay, I could not find it. It hit my shirt, and then it must have gone down on the floor somewhere, and I just can't find it. I was feeling kind of bad. I was thinking I'm going to have to make up a story now about, you know, how the Bismarck had these signal lamps, but one of them was missing the shutters, and, and they used Morse code, you know, Morse code, the dots and the dashes, and you know how this one was just one great big long dash. And then I'm reading here, make three, and I've got parts for four. Oh my goodness. Okay, now I'm going to do it a little different here. Okay. Get that on there. Now, very carefully, I'm going to turn this around. You remember we made this about a week or two ago? I wonder if it's going to work. Maybe if I hold it a little flatter. No, hold it flatter yet. Probably going to have so much wax on it, now the paint isn't going to stick. Okay, does that look like it's in there? I can't see it. I'm looking straight down on it. It kind of looks like it is, and it looks straight. And the lines are running in the right direction. Okay, now don't poke at it. And I was looking at it from an angle, and it looked like it wasn't seated in the hole. And it is now. Pressed it in with my finger. Now, I realize I've said many, many times that I don't do reenactments, but, you know, uh, yeah, I'm sort of doing a reenactment here. When I did those three little uh, signal lamps, I forgot to push record, or I thought I had, let's put it that way, and I did not use the wax pencil. I used a piece, piece of uh, a toothpick with some uh, blue tack on the end of it. And I know I said I wasn't going to use the blue tack for this, but you know, I thought, I'm going to give it another try. And it worked really, really well. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm going to have to remember that. And as for my wax pencil, well, it's history. I am sure that you have figured out by now why it is that everything's upside down. It's as though you're sitting opposite me. The instruction manual is right side up for me. Anyway, we've got L15 here. More little pieces. And L5. And uh, this is an observation set. And we make four. But we'll just make one on camera. I think I put it way too much on there. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I wasn't thinking. I've already done a dry run. So we should be able to just drop this in here. Okay, once that evaporates, that will not come out of there. I'd stand it up, except it keeps falling over. Because of this little peg coming out of here. Anyway, I guess something like this would have been about, in, on the real ship, I'm guessing about six feet tall. Because I'm thinking that probably when it was standing up like this, somebody would be behind it looking in the optics because it is an observation set so anyway now I have decided that I'm going to make the eighth one of these lights the reason being is that I was noticing afterwards that these little photo etch pieces they uh, they look better one way up than the other and I think uh, when I did one of them I uh, did it the poorer way, if you know what I mean. 
So, yeah, in other words, this side here that's up now is not as detailed as this side. Oh, and there's something else I want to show you. Okay, here's my uh, double-sided tape. Now, this is the one, that's the carpet tape. A couple of days ago, I got some regular double-sided tape. And I was, uh, when I was editing out the last few scenes there, I was thinking, uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm using the the uh, blue, blue tack to pick up the small piece. Well, why couldn't I sort of do it in reverse and have a piece of double-sided tape stuck down on my glass or whatever? And then I could take the one of the parts, stick it on the tape, take the other part, pick it up, and just drop it down. And then I wouldn't be chasing these things all over the place. Makes sense to me. I'm going to give it a try. Once again, I'm going to cut out all the needless nonsense here. I would get it almost just right. And then I would think, you know, if I moved it just a little bit more this way or that way, well, you know what would happen. Yeah. Now, this is actually the first time I'm trying this system. Well, I hope there's not going to be too many oopsies. I'm trying to get it so that it's straight. Oh, shoot. That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, I think I've got it. Now, one of the viewers was uh, asking me about or making the comment that he thought that why am I using solvent on these photo etched parts? Well, I, I know that the solvent will not stick to the photo etch. It will completely evaporate off of it. And I don't think it'll leave even any residue. But what is happening right now, as long as I get enough on there, that is, the, uh, the plastic all the way around will dissolve. It'll liquefy. And then the part will... can be sort of... Uh, if I'm careful here, it can be just sort of pushed down into place. And I know I don't have the macro lens on, but that's that's pretty well seated now. Got to be careful I don't push too hard or I'll bend it. But anyway, I like this idea. This seems to be working good. As long as when I remove it now, all right, as long as I remove it, that's stuck stronger than I thought. Okay, I don't get uh, tape residue stuck on the bottom. Maybe I'll look at it under the microscope just for the fun of it. But I won't bore you with that. Yeah, boy, this stuff sticks good. Here's one of those little lights that we had from... Uh, that we were just doing, and... Uh, oh, that would have worked fantastic. It sticks down on there. Then I would have just taken my, my blue tack and I don't have any more of those little square pieces, but yeah, that would have worked really good. Okay, a new system. You know what I think I'm going to do? I have a lot of places on the photo etch sheets, like like uh, the, this piece, this piece, and this piece have been removed. So So this whole little area here, I don't need it. I can just sort of snip this off. And I can do a uh, sort of a sample, Put, try and glue two photo etch pieces together and then try and glue a piece of plastic on it using the extra thin. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll do that today, but uh, I'll do it sometime. Now I don't think I need to do a dry run here, I'm pretty sure this is going to work. Yeah, you notice it's, well, I put too much on. But um, you notice when I brushed it on there, it didn't have a tendency to... Uh, I can't talk and work at the same time, sorry. I can't pick up a toothpick either. There we go. 
Okay, so I'll put this one on here, drop it on there, and then we should be able to just lock it in place like this. Oops, stuck my finger on there. There we go, see that? So now that's locked in place. I was noticing on the other one we did, it didn't, you know, it has a tendency to go back and forth a little bit there, and I didn't have it perfectly lined up. I think this one I did better. Okay, once that evaporates, it's going to be stuck there. Now, I'll take one of these. It doesn't remember, it doesn't matter which way it goes, so I can just... Now I have to remember when I try to pull the part up off of the sticky tape that I don't pull it up like this, but I try to pry it up from the bottom. Otherwise I might, you know, pull the pieces apart. Now I know that's not 100% square to you, but I'm looking straight down on it. It actually looks really good. Uh, you know what, as long as we're doing that, I wonder if we could uh, do this one here. Who says we have to do it upside down? Let's do a dry run here just for the fun of it. I think that'll be alright. Maybe I should be using the tweezers on this. Uh, maybe I will do this one upside down. Then I can see the hole better. Makes sense to me. Okay, let's just carefully pry this off here now. I don't think I need to really poke that down too hard. Okay. Lots. I hope I'm not getting my fingers in your road there. Take this one off. Turn it over carefully. Make sure everything is horizontal this way and that it's not slumping down at the front. Otherwise, the light won't fit. Yeah, I like that double sided tape idea. Now, I was noticing when I was doing this, by the way, I've done all eight pieces now, even though I only need seven. And I was noticing when I removed one of them, I think it was about the fourth one, I removed it off the sticky tape here and I put it on the glass. And when I went to manipulate it around, uh, I noticed it kind of stuck on the glass. Now, I don't know if that's, you know, residue that it picked up from the tape, or is it a case of maybe I just put too much CA thin on and it ran right down and made the, uh, dissolve the, the bottom of the base which is quite likely because right now this one's not sticking at all i tend to talk about what i'm thinking about at the time like a couple of hours ago i put out two carrots for the rabbits and i just checked about five minutes ago and they're gone already now about the ship's bell i don't think i'm gonna glue it together I think I'm going to wait until after I get the bell painted because I think I'll be able to uh, maybe do a better job because it's going to be hard to paint the bell with the uh, gold color um, while it's attached to this and not get the gold paint on this. So I think if I'm careful when I paint the bell, I should be able to, uh, you know, not fill that hole. And, and if I do, I, I can always drill it out. Um, yeah, so I think I'm just going to leave that, even though, you know, I have this almost overwhelming desire to glue it in place, but, uh, I think we'll just leave it and quit poking. Uh, 
I'm thinking that this part here, it just might look better if the stand or base was painted one shade of gray and the light part was painted, painted another shade of gray. Um, I think that they will uh, probably stand out just a little better. I'm just going to take this apart here again very carefully. I don't want to accidentally break anything. There we go. And uh, paint these separately when we get to the painting part. Now, except for the ship's bell that we were just talking about, we've got all the parts made for step 19. Searchlight, the signal lamps, the whistle that I was calling the ship's horn, the observation set, and of course the ship's bell. That's it. There's nothing more now for 19. We can start on 20. But before I do that, I want to show you something here. Remember I was talking about the photo etch, and if you put it in one way, it looks different from the other way? In other words, one, one way looks more detailed? Well, one of these is less detailed than the other seven. I'll see if I can find it and show it to you. Way back, I think it was around episode number 31, we first started looking at photo etch. And I was noticing that one side, it's almost as though when they made it, it was laying on like a piece of glass or something, and then it was formed up off of that. So anything that had any texture or anything, it would be on the top side. And they seem to be able to do a remarkable job on that, even though it's so terribly thin. And if you look at the one on the right, there's the horizontal, the main horizontal crossbars, and then there's the little, uh, little ones running vertically in between. And you'll notice how the little vertical ones, they appear to be recessed back a little bit. Whereas the, uh, the uh, part on the left, everything is the same dimension. Everything's sort of flat. Uh, anyway, that's what I'm talking about. Now another pleasant surprise I got is when I started airbrushing, I did not lose that detail. That still stays there. You can still see it. And uh, anyway, I think that's it for today's episode. So... All being well, we'll see you tomorrow with step number 20. Thanks for watching.